Yeah, today we are talking about a very important topic that is about carcinoma cervix. And carcinoma cervix is a preventable and treatable disease. But unfortunately, many females across the globe are being diagnosed in an advanced stage. Globally speaking, cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer after lung cancer, breast cancer and head and neck cancer. In spite being a preventable and treatable disease, it continues to devastate several females across the globe. And today's conversation is very crucial for us here in India because the effect of the disease is profound. When we come to the statistics of cervical cancer, in 2023, approximately 6 million people, 6 lakhs females have been diagnosed with cervical cancer across the globe and 3 lakhs deaths were attributed to cervical cancer. The burden of the disease is more from the developing and underdeveloped countries which contribute to 80% of the cases. Even Asian countries contribute to approximately 50% of cervical cancer cases. So coming to Indian scenario, unfortunately more and more young females are being diagnosed with cervical cancer these days and 60% of them are diagnosed in an advanced stage. Once upon a time, cervical cancer was the most common cancer in females in India. But now, because of various reasons like change in the lifestyle and various other reasons, breast cancer has become very common cancer in India. But still, in the rural population and in low socioeconomic groups, cervical cancer is very common. And According to the data, in 2023, approximately 3.4 lakhs females have been diagnosed with cervical cancer in India. And it is estimated that every year, approximately 60,000 females die of cervical cancer. It's a huge number. The main reason for this scenario in India is, as we all know, the, more, the most common causes of cervical cancer, that is human papilloma viral infection. It's also called as HPV infection. And the research says that most of the cancers, almost 80% of cancers are caused by HPV infection. Apart from that, other sexually transmitted diseases also contribute to cervical cancer. Apart from HPV infection, there's a very, very important component that is low immunity. Females suffering with HIV, other immune compromised health conditions, or someone who is on drugs which cause lower immunity or nowadays we are seeing when youth they are getting affected by they are getting addicted to drugs which lower the immunity apart from this smoking is also known to contribute to cervical cancer the the reason why we are having more and more cancers in india and why we are detecting late is very important for us to understand awareness about the disease, prevention, screening, and access to healthcare are the vital pillars for prevention and elimination of the disease. We all know there is very less awareness about cervical cancer in India, and hardly there is any public talk. If we all remember, some time back, a known celebrity, Poonam Pandey, created a buzz in social media regarding cervical cancer. And the buzz remained very short, but it's a very good initiative to begin with. But such an initiative should continue. A continuous process, an ongoing process is needed. Similarly, when we come to screening, there is less awareness regarding the screening. Apart from that, there is a lot of stigma associated with screening. Females generally are scared to meet the doctor. There is a component of fear, they're afraid what the doctor may say, what kind of tests I might have to undergo, what will be the stage. And there's something called as denial. Initially, we all refuse to accept that there's going to be a problem or there's a cancer in the body. Apart from that, there is a cultural, socioeconomic barriers which prevent females to access the healthcare. Similarly, the most important aspect is vaccination. Nowadays, we are aware that HPV vaccine can prevent 70% of cervical cancers. In India, we are having the challenge of availability of the drug, availability of the vaccine, awareness regarding the vaccine, and most importantly, 
there's a lot of misinformation regarding the vaccine and there's a lot of myth associated with the vaccine like side effects because of the vaccine infertility associated with vaccine that is not true and most importantly healthcare structure we need to have a robust health robust healthcare structure and the healthcare structure for regular screening is not available readily in many parts of india especially in rural parts of india when we compare to other developed countries where there is a robust process of vaccination and screening they could achieve a near complete cure or elimination of cervical cancer but we are still on the path when I, when i look at cervical cancer it is not a disease which is affecting a single woman as i have already mentioned more and more females in the younger age group that is between 35 to 55 years are getting diagnosed with cervical cancer and these females are the core of the family i always believe that females are the backbone of the family holding the family together once the females in this productive age group are affected not only does the family affected physically but also there is a lot of social and financial burden and this burden is not limited to that one particular family it also affects the society who has taken cervical cancer elimination as a global movement since 2020 november 17th is observed as cervical cancer elimination day who has come up with strategies with a global strategy incorporating screening prevention and access to healthcare as the important components of this strategy who believes in women equity that is the who believes that access to primary health care is the fundamental right of every woman apart from that who also is focused on child education and child health as i said most of these females are in the productive age group who have small children so they are also committed to protect the childhood and they also want to protect the family from getting into poverty apart from this who also wants to take hiv elimination also along with the elimination of cervical cancer so who has come up with target specific targets for the year 2030 as we have mentioned earlier globally the cervical cancer rates are very high and recently we have the data that the cervical cancers in the world is around 6 lakhs this estimate is so i expected to reach a figure of 7 to 8 lakhs by the end of 2030 so the who has come up with targets 90 70 90 that is 90% of girls should get vaccinated by the age of 15 70% of females should undergo screening by the age of 35 at least to once and again by the age of 45 and 90% of females should be treated with both precancerous and cancerous lesions most of the countries who are associated with who all the member countries have agreed and signed to reach these targets by the end of 2030 in india also every year we observe world cancer awareness month in the month of january and this year we have come up with the theme of learn prevent and screen learning in sense of educating the people regarding the cervical cancer the disease and how to adapt a healthy lifestyle secondly about vaccination and third about screening it is very crucial for our country to adapt this strategy because as i mentioned earlier there is lot of gap in the information the target population is not being educated adequately when i say the target population even in cities the low socio economic group doesn't have the adequate information similarly the rural population also doesn't have adequate information regarding cervical cancer so this is primarily the responsibility of medical social worker anganwadi workers and asha workers who interact with them regularly nowadays we are seeing many individuals who are campaigning exclusively about personal hygiene and menstrual health similarly the vaccination drive 
has to be more. Many efforts are being made to incorporate HPV vaccination in national immunization schedule, but still there is a long way to go. There is a disparity here both in urban areas and rural areas because we see in urban areas more and more females or more and more girl childs are getting vaccinated and screening is done more robustly in urban areas. Whereas in the rural areas, still there is not availability of the vaccination and screening. There are many individuals and organizations who are working towards cancer screening, but still we are long way from achieving our targets. Through Singerazu Cancer Foundation, we have been doing several cancer screening programs, awareness initiatives and programs. The main reason why we embarked on this journey is, as I said, unfortunately, nowadays we are seeing more and more young females being diagnosed with cancer. And as a primary health giver, I have seen the devastating effect of cervical cancer in the females and their families. At the same time, I was witness of the tremendous resilience and strength they showed to fight the disease and emerged as cancer survivors. It's not only my intention, but the intention of every healthcare worker involved in the cancer cure. It's our intention to ensure that no female endures the pain and suffering caused by cervical cancer. My vision doesn't stop at treating a patient. It goes beyond that. Our intention is to empower the women with the access and the knowledge to primary health care. It's about creating a future which is free of cervical cancer. And we want to see cervical cancer as a preventable and treatable disease. I believe the actions we take today result in a disease-free or cancer-free tomorrow for the generations to come up. We do not want females to suffer because of lack of information. A single individual cannot achieve this. We need a collective effort in this path and we need to break the barriers of misinformation and fear regarding the vaccination and treatment which are preventing females from accessing the basic healthcare they require. We are fortunate to have many like-minded individuals who joined us in this path. We have conducted several cancer awareness camps and screening camps in mostly rural parts of Telangana and even the city of Hyderabad, especially in low socioeconomic groups. The main intention of these camps is really not to identify a frank disease, but to identify precancerous lesions. In this journey, I always felt a lack of a colposcopic device which helps me in assessing the patient adequately and for a future follow. So when I heard of a possible colposcopic device, I did a research on that because they had done a great work abroad. And even before I took that device, there is a lot of work in AIMS and other parts of the country with the doctors I interacted with. So when I uh, my colposcope, it has been part of me for the past few years and constantly they have been upgrading the device. In India, we have taken a long stride in medical technology where we are equipped with powerful tools of diagnostic and screening. Unless they are used effectively, they are of no use for the common man whom they are targeted. The same thing I believe goes with Gainai. The best part of Gainai was we really enjoyed the clarity of image and the resolution of image which helped us to identify even the small leads. And the best part what I believe was the recent upgradation where speed score was incorporated. The speed score really made life more validated for us. It made the whole process standardized and verifiable. And I always thank Dr. Elizabeth who is based in Sweden but she's always a call away from us and she always was readily helping us whenever we have any doubts in using the colposcope. Similarly, the EMR has been very helpful for us because of the storage of the data. And again, whenever we need it, we can go back and verify. Even for future reference, it helped us a lot. I think it has been 
a very useful device and it can be used in the clinics hospitals both in urban and rural areas and it can be used as a screening path and i believe it can be it can be called as a screening device taken to the patient instead of patient coming to the hospital but in our camps i have a, a specific protocol wherein we train the team we always have a dedicated team who is trained with the colposcope device and the data of the patient and the history is entered and before taking the images the data is verified by two people and after the images are taken the, the concerned doctor takes the pap smear and the, all the this process is done offline so once the camp is done we sync all the images to online and again i personally log into virtual set and i go through all the images and we do sweet scoring of all the images and we wait till we get the pap smear report and then we incorporate the whole report and then we transfer the data to a person who is concerned with the camp we have identified significant number of pre cancerous and unhealthy cervix so whenever we found any discrepancy where like the pap smear report or in the colposcope when we find unhealthy cervix or pre cancerous lesion we always inform this to the patient to the person who is in charge of the camp and also the concerned medical social worker so we made sure that patient reaches to the concerned doctor and takes further treatment and again we follow up the patient after 6 months and again we follow the process and see in the colposcope and again we repeat the pap smear and see whether the cervix is healthy or the patient is treated or not but however we also face some challenges here because this requires a meticulous knowledge about the anatomy of the patient and have an idea how to take pics we need to have a dedicated team definitely it's not easy to get a dedicated team for that but for we are fortunate that we had team and the training took significant time but i believe it's worth investing on the time similarly getting adjusted to emr might take time because for doctors may not be very easy because nowadays more and more doctors are getting exposed to emr it's not very difficult but as i said sweet scoring again incorporating all the data it will take definitely time and effort but for someone who is in the path who is committed to the path the journey is always smooth remember collectively we all can eliminate cervical cancer and make this world cervical cancer free world